Russian diplomats tonight are on the move, packing up and shipping out after President Obama shut down two Russian compounds. And the clock is ticking for dozens of diplomats and their families who have until noon on Sunday to get out of the country. Russia sending a plane to pick them up. Have to leave within uh, hours. And uh, it's, 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 it's just not, not human. The only thing I, I can say is that uh, uh, I think uh, it's quite scandalous that they chose to go after our kids. You know? Russian diplomats like Vitaly well, Cherkin, the Russian ambassador to the UN, condemned the sanctions. Yeah. They know full well that those two facilities, which they mentioned in their notes, they are vacation facilities for our kids. We cannot leave such steps unanswered. Reciprocity is a law of diplomacy and international affairs. Therefore, the Russian Foreign Ministry, together with our colleagues from other agencies, proposed that the President of the Russian Federation declare 31 staff members of the U.S. Embassy in Moscow and four diplomats from the U.S. Consulate General in St. Petersburg persona non grata. Vladimir Putin had a surprise for the U.S. today. Not long after, his foreign minister recommended that Russia expel dozens of U.S. diplomats. Putin went a different way. There will be no immediate retaliation for American sanctions over the hacking scandal. Putin said he'll wait to see what happens when Donald Trump becomes president. Russian President Vladimir Putin has turned down Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's proposal to expel U.S. diplomats in Moscow in response to a similar move by Washington. He said that Russia will not stoop to the level of irresponsible diplomacy, but will work to restore ties with the United States. We reserve the right for tit-for-tat measures, but we won't stoop to kitchen diplomacy. We'll plan our next steps to restore Russian-U.S. relations based on policy which the new administration of Donald Trump will pursue. We won't create hurdles for American diplomats. We won't expel anyone. The current president is punishing Putin, but the next president is praising him, tweeting about the Russian leader's pledge not to retaliate against the U.S. until he sees how the Trump administration treats him, saying, quote, Great move on delay by V. Putin. I always knew he was very smart. German media has recently been speculating about the alleged cyber threat posed by Russia to Germany's election next year. Well, the threat has, however, been questioned by one politician who's demanding proof from the government. Peter Oliver has the story. Russian hacking, Russian potential influence on next year's federal elections here in Germany has been, well, all over the news media. It's been talked about as something that could potentially change the outcome of next year's election. Well, that prompted one member of the Bundestag to actually put a question to um, the government here and ask where these allegations had come from. I asked uh, my uh, government, uh, what is uh, the proof for this? Uh, are there, what are the indications? Are there any proofs? Uh, um, in, in the answer, in the end, there is no real evidence. But I didn't get any proofs, just the indication of the uh, um, leak of the US server of the Democrats and no proof. President Obama is rushing to resettle refugees here in the United States during his last days in office. From October 1st to December 27th of this year, 25,671 refugees were resettled in the United States. And during that same time period in 2015, the number was 13,791 refugees who were resettled. The Obama administration has resettled 3,566 Syrian refugees since October 1st, almost 3,000 more than the number that were resettled during the same period of time in 2015. Despite fresh clashes that erupted after the ceasefire in Syria went into effect Thursday, Russia's UN ambassador Vitaly Cherkin was optimistic. I think the initial indications that it's holding adequately. Russia had called a last-minute Security Council session to get the Council's endorsement for the ceasefire deal brokered by Russia and Turkey. A vote is expected Saturday. The hope is that the Russia-Turkey cooperation might help pave the way for a political settlement in Syria. After previous attempts by Washington and Moscow to broker a nationwide ceasefire failed. Our suspicion was that they were not able to separate Nusra from the so-called moderate opposition groups. It has been accomplished. Now we the military have a clear understanding of who is who and who is where. While the U.S. has been out of the loop on this latest deal, the Russian ambassador said Moscow expects Washington to participate after U.S. President-elect Donald Trump takes office. Russia also hopes countries like Egypt, Kuwait, Qatar and Saudi Arabia would come on board. But regardless of which nations join in mediation efforts, one thing is clear. Russia is now taking the lead on the Syria issue. 
The president of Turkey is on his way to obtaining more power, but critics fear it could threaten the country's democracy. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has championed a constitutional reform to shift Turkey's government from a parliamentary system to a presidential one. The Turkish parliament's constitutional commission just approved the proposal. If enacted, the reform would nix the prime minister spot and designate all executive power to the president. As it stands, Turkey's presidential office is largely ceremonial. But since Erdogan took office in 2014, he's used his popular to shift more power his way. And after a failed coup attempt in July, Erdogan used a three-month state of emergency which limited the constitutional freedoms of Turkish citizens. The reform proposal is just the latest move by Erdogan's administration to expand presidential powers. One law expert said the new proposed system shift doesn't seem to have the mechanisms that keep the president in check. Parliament is expected to debate the bill in January. After that, it'll head to a referendum which will likely happen in spring. Turkish police have arrested 58 suspected ISIL militants in the southern provinces of Adana and Gaziantep. According to Dogen News Agency, counter-terror police squads hauled in 40 suspects after a raid on 40 premises in Adana. 18 suspects were also arrested in Gaziantep province. The Interior Ministry says more than 3,300 people were arrested in Turkey this year. Over 8,000 had suspected links to ISIL, with 679 of them being foreign nationals. Australian counter-terror officers have arrested a 40-year-old man at Sydney Airport and charged him with making online threats relating to New Year's Eve festivities in Sydney. The arrest was made after the man disembarked from a flight from London on Thursday. Police did not reveal the person's nationality but said he had no links to any cultural groups. This follows police raids across southern city of Melbourne a week ago. Authorities say they foiled an ISO-inspired plot to attack prominent sites in the city on Christmas Eve. Authorities in major European capitals have beefed up security over fears of terror attacks ahead of New Year's festivities. Thousands of police and military personnel have been deployed to protect uh, the civilians in Paris, Berlin, Brussels, Madrid, and Rome, among other European cities. Barricades are going up in Berlin ahead of New Year's, just a week after the city suffered a deadly attack by Islamic State. Officials have already closed Pariser Platz Square near the Brandenburg Gate, where an extra 1,700 police officers will be on patrol. Organizers say they're confident they'll ring in 2017 safely. The security concept is very comprehensive, and if you visit, you will probably be in one of the safest places in Germany tomorrow night. The attack last week left 12 people dead and prompted greater calls for stepping up security. Brussels is also following suit. The city suffered from attacks in March when Islamist suicide bombers killed 16 people. Now, city officials and New Year's organizers are not taking any chances. Obviously, the police will be there in numbers, and as in other European capitals, we will work with a system of blocks. When one block is full, it will be closed to avoid having too many people in the same place. Officials had debated canceling New Year fireworks in Brussels, but decided they would go ahead. A deadline for Indians to deposit invalid rupee notes at the country's banks closes on Friday. Attention now turns towards the potential political ramifications of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's boat currency shakeup. But restrictions on the amount of cash that can be withdrawn from ATM is also due to be lifted. 52 days after Modi scrapped high denomination notes and a crackdown on corruption, political analysts said, the first of several 2017 state elections in the north of India will be the real test to see how residents have judged the policy. A new headache for the UK Prime Minister Theresa May as a fresh legal challenge against Britain's plans to leave the EU is launched at London's High Court. The claim lodged by four anonymous claimants says Britain will remain in the European economic area and the single market after withdrawal from the EU. The claim argues that Britain's exit from the EEA needs separate parliamentary approval, allowing for tariff-free trade and free movement of people. However, the government and the European Commission insist that the UK leave the EEA at the moment it departs from the EU. Prime Minister Theresa May has said she will begin the formal withdrawal process by the end of next March. I'm <laughs> sorry.
dit mijn oor. New York officials issue the first known intersex birth certificate in the United States. Sarah Kelly Keenan, who recently became the first California resident to change her gender to non-binary, made history again this week. The New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene granted her request for an intersex birth certificate. At 55, Keenan has been waiting a long time and calls it, quote, shocking and empowering. Although she prefers female pronouns, Keenan was born with male genes, female genitalia, and mixed internal reproductive organs. Keenan told NBC News that she started hormone replacement therapy at 16 and doctors recommended surgery so she could conform to one gender. But Keenan has embraced her intersex status. Transgender activism has progressed in recent decades and it's fairly simple in the U.S. to switch genders on a legal document, but those born intersex or those who fall into the non-binary category are pushing for more options. A controversial new law in California is removing all penalties for children soliciting or engaging in prostitution starting January 1st, and it sparked a fierce debate. Opponents of SB 1322 say it's essentially legalizing child prostitution. California Assemblyman Travis Allen said it's opening the door for more child prostitutes and it renders law enforcement powerless to stop the cycle of abuse. Hundreds of new state laws will take effect on New Year's Day. Some of them are raising eyebrows. America is known as the land of the free, but residents of Illinois may need a reminder on New Year's Day they will wake up with almost 200 new laws to follow. On the other hand, they may consider themselves lucky. California passed nearly 900 new laws, many of which go into effect in the new year. Fans of Brooklyn Lager and the other beers made here at Brooklyn Brewery will have something extra to celebrate this New Year's Eve. In fact, if you're a craft beer drinker in New York City, every beer you drink in 2017 will mean a tax benefit for your brewer. Brooklyn Brewery founder, Stephen Hindy. Pennies are falling into the Brooklyn Brewery piggy bank. That's all thanks to a new law that gives small brewers in the Big Apple a kickback. Cheers. Of about a penny a bottle. So it'll save us about a quarter of a million dollars this year. The more we drink, the more you make. It would be great if you drank more. Governor Cuomo isn't hoping the tax benefit creates new drinkers, but rather new jobs. And across the country, new laws could change everything from the way you drive to the way you get your hair cut. With more, here are my colleagues John Blackstone in California and Dean Reynolds in Illinois. Here in San Francisco and across California on January 1st, it will be illegal for drivers to hold or use electronic devices while driving. Smartphones and other gadgets will have to be mounted on the dashboard or the windshield while driving. And drivers must use hands-free technology. Here in Illinois, a new law requires hairdressers, nail technicians, and others to undergo training so that they can recognize the signs of domestic and sexual abuse. They won't be required to report any abuse, but cosmetologists won't be able to renew their licenses without the training. Meanwhile, millions of workers will see a raise on January 1st as 18 states bump up their minimum wage. In Nevada, New Year's Day is the dawn of legal recreational marijuana in the state, one of four where voters in November decided to end prohibition. And in California, six controversial new gun control measures will take effect, including an expanded ban on assault weapons. When President Obama returns from his Hawaii vacation next week, he plans an all-out press to save Obamacare. One of the president's biggest worries in these final days of his presidency is that the Republican Congress and soon-to-be President Donald Trump will follow through on their promise to repeal Obamacare. So next Wednesday, the president will go to Capitol Hill to strategize with congressional Democrats on a plan to save the law. The White House says that since it was signed into law in 2010, Obamacare has provided health coverage to 20 million Americans. Americans. But the law has infuriated some Americans and Republicans in Congress who say it's made coverage for many unaffordable. A key part of the president's strategy will be to try to convince the American public that repealing Obamacare without replacing it would throw the entire health care system into chaos. Only 6% of people who run farms are under 35. That could affect your food and the environment. Some young people say issues like low pay and being overworked discourages them from getting into agriculture. But with older farmers retiring, there are some 700,000 farmers likely leaving the workforce in the next 25 years. Technology could help fill some of that gap. 
But without enough young people to take over, food production will rely even more on bigger farms. Bigger farms mean a bigger impact on the environment, and that fewer voices are a part of choosing which kinds of food are grown. For a lot of homeowners like me, this was the year for smart home technology. Meet my new Nest thermostat. Now, I didn't actually buy it alone. It was part of the package when I had my entire air system replaced, and that's actually key. More companies are incorporating smart home tech into their upgrade packages, whether you're replacing the furnace or the alarm system or whatever. Now, in 2016, 80 million smart home devices were delivered worldwide, a 64% increase from 2015, and that's all according to a brand new report from IHS Market. That's your nests, your August smart door locks, your ring smart doorbells, and a big chunk, chunk of it was personal home assistants like Google Home, Amazon's Alexa, and Mickey from Bosch. Win Hotels announced it will install Alexa in every suite, so big companies are getting into the smart home tech, like Comcast buying smaller home tech companies and Alarm.com as well, expanding their offerings. Offerings. The focus for 2017, though, will be educating the consumer, lowering the price, and enhancing security to prevent cyber attacks. There will be improvements in the technology, of course, but companies will have to push consumers because so far most consumers don't ask for it. They expect the smart home tech from their new construction, from the home builders, but they really don't seem to care if it's in the older homes. You talk to real estate agents, you ask if it's a selling point. Believe it or not, Andrew, they say not so much. dog left to die now an essential part of an Oklahoma family the neighbor living in this house behind me told me that he found Brutus almost three years ago he was behind this fence across the street here scared and alone quite the opposite fit of what he is today he was real growly and barky and scared you just see it in his face that was in February 2014 now ah! Brutus is full of life. Everybody knows Brutus. Recently, I organized a meeting for all of the people who gave Brutus a second chance. It's so wonderful to see him again. James Chris John lives near 11th and Lewis. He's the neighbor who noticed Brutus was alone and who called Unchained Oklahoma. The house was open. Uh, dog food had been uh, left on the floor. A lot of personal items were still there. Melody Parkins is with that rescue organization. She says she later learned Brutus's owner had moved after her husband was arrested on drug complaints, Stop. leaving Brutus behind. Melody and her husband Kent took a special liking to Brutus and they started socializing him. He's always listened to commands immediately. I mean, he's always has. They worked with him several hours a day for a year and a half. At about six months, we, we had that feeling that this dog's got something special. Everybody who came in contact with this big guy knew he was special, but they say for some reason, nobody was adopting him. Yeah. That reason turned out to be two-year-old Jason. An actual meant to be together. Jason's family adopted Brutus about 10 months ago. His first week in the home. One night we were just all sleeping and he had hit me in the face and was trying to wake me up. Amber Bragg says Brutus then took her to little Jason. Whenever I looked over at the baby, my baby was convulsing and having a seizure. Jason has a seizure disorder. And Bragg says after that experience, she learned that Brutus senses when one is about to hit. Four weeks ago, he had a Another seizure, Brutus went into the bedroom, grabbed him by his shirt collar, he pulled him up, and started barking until we got there to him. All of this without any specialized training. I feel like he's in better hands with that pit than he is with our anybody. I mean, if it wasn't for that dog, he may not, he may not be running and playing like he is now. 